This is Greg Luck. If you're unfamiliar, he's a televangelist, a hate preacher, a nutter butter of epic proportions. Well, he came out here not too long ago on his little stage and announced that he's shifting gears. He's shifting to a ministry that's more focused on exercising demons from people. Now, in the last part, if you didn't see the other, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll give context if it's missing. But in the last one, we talked about his deliverance manual. Seriously, there's a deliverance manual. Here, this is it right here. The deliverance manual. And it talks about all of the demons that he believes exist, like the demon of violent outbursts, the demon of stiff hands, the demon of itching. I, really, I am not joking here, people. Anyway, it got crazier as I went down. If you want to see the full breakdown, you can watch the previous episode, or you can watch the full breakdown on my main channel, Owen Morgan Telltale, which I'm like this close to be ab being able to say I'm at almost half a million subs. I'm this close. Right now, I have to say I'm almost to almost to half a million subs, and it's a little clunky, so hopefully I'll get there soon. But anyway. Uh, if you want to watch that on there, it, it's, you know, it's a full breakdown of the whole deliverance manual. So it's pretty fascinating. But that was the last one. He's about to defend his decision to go into exorcism ministry, basically, and his claim that there are demons around every corner. So, yeah, let's uh, let's give this a listen. See what he has to say, shall we? And while we listen to this, we're going to play some Breath of the Wild, too. I'm just kind of going around grinding. So, yeah. Is there a demon of evangelistic con artist? Well, interestingly enough, uh, Greg Locke actually does believe that, you know, a lot of televangelists are con artists, as a matter of fact. Um, now, there's this group out there called Women for Trump. I haven't talked about this at length as of the moment that this is being recorded. Um, by the time this releases, I may have already put this out on my main channel. I'm not sure. But I'm doing heavy research on this group to get information on how they operate. Women for Trump. They stand behind Trump at every single rally. And the reason I bring them up in the context of Greg Locke is because they are almost exactly like Greg Locke. As I was saying about Women for Trump, um, they, are, they have some striking similarities to Greg Locke's belief system. I've been calling Greg Locke witches for Jesus, his denomination, witches for Jesus for a while, because the dude actually believes that he is capable of doing all of the things that witches are capable of doing. He just gets his power from God rather than from Satan, which is, of course, where witches get their power, right? So he believes in divination. He believes in fortune telling and the whole nine yards, everything he thinks witches do. He believes he's capable of. And it worked very similarly with the, the Women for Trump group. What the hell was the name of that church? Dude, I'm halfway through the book or a third of the way through. And I cannot remember the name. Fellowship. It's Fellowship something. Word of Faith Fellowship. It's called Word of Faith Fellowship. Word of Faith Fellowship. I got to drill that into my head. Word of Faith Fellowship. WFF, Word of Faith Fellowship, WFF. I will get this. I keep mixing it up with Stephen Anderson's cult, the NIFB. Um, or, oh my God, now I can't remember the name of Stephen Anderson's church. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Word of Faith Fellowship operates very similarly. The, the Women for Trump cult that exists... Um, they exist in a very small town uh, in North Carolina, just like Greg Locke does, right outside Mount Juliet, Tennessee. And they had enough sway in the town to get the sheriff elected and everybody elected. Um, the Women for Trump group did, a Word of Faith Fellowship. So anyway, it's pretty concerning stuff. And I see Greg Locke doing like a weirdly similar number of things. Like it's bizarre to, to see the similarities between them but anyway so he fell you know face first into deliverance ministry i.e exorcisms that's what that means so i want to give this a listen and see what he had to say last episode he brought up the deliverance manual let's continue on from there and so i i find it just 
extraordinarily fascinating that out of all the things Jesus said, which really in the grand scheme of things, if you took the red letters of Jesus and put them all in a book, it'd be a very small manual. Yeah, absolutely. It is a very small manual. Jesus did not really say that much. It was largely, the Bible is really a collection of things that Jesus' followers said after he died, long, like 70 to 150 years after he died. It, it would look like the deliverance manual. And that, that was, that's what brought it up last time. I mean, I kind of went through it a little bit, so you got an idea for what we're talking about. But whew, crazy stuff, dude, crazy stuff. For real. We think Jesus said an Encyclopedia Britannica worth of stuff. He did that we don't know about, John 21 says. But what we have recorded in red letters, it's very small. And a lot of it is repetition. Because yep, yep, exactly. Because the Gospels are just copies, piss poor copies of each other. I mean, they're really bad copies of each other. Like, um, errors left and right. It's just, it's ridiculous, dude. How many errors and problems and hiccups and everything there are all through it. The book of John is completely fabricated, basically, like, long after the fact, and made up fake stories that did not happen. Used the already existing gospel as a source, Mark, um, and possibly used Matthew and Luke as a source. I'm not sure if it did or not. And just added fake stories. Seriously. That is really what happened in the book of John. So, anyways, it's just absurd on every level. Because it's through four books, especially Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because they all quote the same stuff. Three different eyewitnesses to the same car accident, if you will. Everybody's got a different perspective. Okay, not exactly. Uh, and no, I mean, there were very different explanations, very different uh, stories all through the Gospels. Conflicting, contradicting stories that don't make any sense at all. It makes no sense. For the Gospels to say the things that they say. I mean, it's just absurd, man, from top to bottom. I'm sorry. Look, I don't usually go on my atheist arc. I am an atheist, but I don't usually fall into this because, you know, some people, like, who cares, right? I mean, people should be able to believe what they want. But it's just, it's honestly completely absurd to believe some of these things. Like, you have to, you have to get serious and look at the facts about it. When you look at the facts, you'll find almost all of the New Testament is fabricated. Uh, there's almost no chance that Jesus was actually the Messiah. I, I, would, I would eat my shorts if I, if I found out that it was real. I, I'm sorry, it's just fake. The New Testament is. Uh, the Old Testament also, but I'm, I'm really going to lean into the New Testament right now. Anyway. And yet of all the things that Jesus could have said, here's my real character. Here is who I am. He says, I am at the very intrinsic core of all that I am. This is the value that I want to propagate. This is the thing that I want to say. This is so he, he addressed Matthew something, 11. I don't remember which one. Um, where it, it basically Jesus says that he is meek. And Greg Locke is like apparently taking that to heart or something. And that, that's the quality that he's talking about right now. Jesus claimed to be meek. Okay. This is the practical theological thing that my church and my people and my followers must understand. I am at the very essence of who I am, humble at heart. And we know that Greg Locke embodies that quality about uh, Jesus, right? He is the most humble of the most humble, 100%. I don't know where the American church missed that. What? I don't know where you missed that. You certainly aren't humble. If by that, now we about to start preaching. What, you're just, you're just now getting to preaching? If by that. Why is he crying? In the last episode, if you didn't see it, I literally, I zoomed in and saw that he actually, his face was wet with tears. I am the last person to complain about that. I think toxic masculinity is a bad thing. More tears, please. It's good. Let your emotions out. But why? Why are you crying? Can you at least give me a reason? 
I'll take anything. The dude's just crying for the sake of it, apparently. He does this every, like, sermon, practically. Just cries for no reason. I, honestly, I'm kind of leaning toward it's a manipulation tactic to make his people more invested and emotional. I don't know of anybody, any human being on planet Earth that cries as much as Greg Locke, in all seriousness, really. Uh, any women, men, uh, or maybe children, maybe children. Uh, I, I remember seeing Alpha Force Zero, my kid, cry her eyes out like, like mad a couple of times. So I suppose he might be up there with, uh, with uh, Kylie, my kid. You believe that humility is a compromise of values, then you've misunderstood the Bible. You can be demonstrative. Okay, that means you can demonstrate. What can you demonstrate? What are you talking about? He uses this word constantly, and he uses it incorrectly. You can demonstrate what, Greg? Maybe he's possessed by the crying demon. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> Thanks, kitty mom. That's a, a distinct possibility. I am not dismissing that. That, that could be. <laughs> well, Notice he didn't put the demon of crying anywhere on the deliverance manual list, did he? Let's just look. Let's just find out. We got the deliverance manual up here. Cry. Okay, we got crystal balls. We got crystals. Nope. No crying, apparently. Okay. I guess he views crying as just fine. Without being devastating. You can be humble without being a wimp. You can be yeah, I said this before. He talked about humility and um, uh, meekness and what the difference is between all this stuff. He basically said meekness, as described in the Bible, is the ability or the power to destroy somebody or something, but the desire not to destroy somebody anyways. Basically, you're capable of destroying somebody, but you don't want to. Now, I don't know what Greg Locke is thinking. I don't know what all of these supposed quote-unquote alpha males are thinking, you know, these Andrew Tate types and all this. I don't know what they're thinking. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I personally don't want people to overestimate me. I want to be exactly within the range of what they expect or below. Or, I mean, I want to be above it. I want them to underestimate me, if anything. I want people to not really be aware of how intelligent I am or how strong or, or whatever. Boris Johnson does the same tactic. I just don't want people to be fully aware of what I'm capable of, is the point here. Because if I do need to use my intelligence or strength or whatever for some reason at some point, I have it. I mean, I don't know how these alpha male types didn't catch on to this a long time ago. Shut your mouth, dumbass. If you need to use your alpha male strength or whatever, then use it when the time comes. Otherwise, shut your mouth. You are just playing your hand. And it's like embarrassing. You can be demonstrative. I don't know what he means there. Without being devastating. I don't know what he means. You can be demonstrative without being devastated. Does he know what that word means? Demonstrative, a version of demonstrate. It's like, here's a context in which demonstrative would be appropriate. We can demonstratively prove that evolution is real. We can prove by demonstration that it's real. That's the context. What the hell is he talking about right now? What, what do you mean, Greg? You can be demonstrative without being devastating. You can be humble without being a wimp. You can be meek without being weak, right? Sure, okay, yes. That's correct. I can't believe it took him... How, how old is this dude? He's like 50 or something? Did it take him 50 years to discover this? I've been living by this principle since I was like 16. Let people underestimate you and only use your, your intelligence or your whatever when you need to. 
You can be Jesus-like without being a jerk about it. Yes, absolutely. Oh, my God. Is this coming out of this dude's mouth right now? Really? So, knock me over with a feather, for real. I, I am honestly surprised to hear Greg Locke, of all people, saying this stuff. I, I, of course, this is, as I mentioned before, this is him, quote-unquote, shifting gears, his word. He's shifting gears. His church is shifting gears. He's changing the way that he does things. So that's kind of interesting. If you think any way, shape, form, or fashion our church is ever going to capitulate to the culture, then you might as well just go ahead and realize we're not. Uh, okay. Did anybody accuse you of that? But I'll explain something to you. Please. Everybody already knows where we stand on certain issues. It doesn't matter if in tomorrow or in 20 years they have church closures. You know what? I'll never have to scream about that again because people all over the planet know we're never going to close our church. Just right, exactly. Yes. N there were no cl uh, church closures for the record. No church in all of America. What he's talking about is church closures because of COVID. And he famously, if you're not familiar with this story. Um, okay, this is one of many clips that I have of Greg Locke basically uh, g getting violent over the uh you know the covid lockdowns or, or whatever let me just explain something before we listen to this clip of greg at no point in the united states did any church ever get shut down there were some cases in which churches were told to hold online services or or optionally meet outside or space their chairs out six feet and take temperatures at the door all good options greg Locke, instead of doing anything literally anything to try to mitigate the ill effects of covid did this this is from uh what 2021 this is august early august 2021 when this came out we have a big old sign that says this is a mask free church. We won't even let you wear a mask on our church campus. So not only is he refusing to, you know, shut down his church. It's not about not shutting down his church. It's about a culture war, plain and simple. He wants to poke the eye of anybody who accepts the science about COVID, that it's real and it's dangerous and it's going to get people killed. He's basically giving a big F you to anybody who has an immunodeficiency something or other, who has problems with uh, taking vaccines or who it's dangerous for or whatever, uh, immunocompromised people. He's putting them in danger. And why? Because he wants to be a, a douchebag. That's it, really. We celebrate faith over fear because God Okay, so he's not, he doesn't have the spirit of fear, and that's why he doesn't wear a mask. I assume that's why he and his church congregants leave their guns at home, too, right? Because they have no reason to be afraid. Is that right, Greg? You're not afraid of anything, so you leave your gun at home? So I said, okay. I said, we're going to have to go ahead and deal with this right now. Since the media is here, since they're trying to shut us down, they need to know that we are both biblical and constitutional. Well, well, nobody needs to know anything about you. Just hold services on Zoom. Dude's already set up for it. He already has, you know, these big cameras and everything else. Hold services on Zoom or space your chairs out or hold service outside you already operate in a circus tent just bring people outside you have the speakers for it and everything he is already set up for this and he consciously intentionally chose to get people hurt and killed instead when he had the ability and it wouldn't cost him a penny more he chose the route that gets people killed instead just because so i said 
We so believe in our First Amendment right to gather that if you show up and you impede on our First Amendment right to worship, we gonna meet you at the door with our Second Amendment right because we are not closing our church because the government told us to. So that was his open threat, basically. Um, the problem with that, of course, is that the idea, the founding principle behind the Constitution and the framers and the founding fathers and everything, the idea that they really wanted to communicate was your rights end where my rights begin. You, you can swing your fist anywhere you want until it connects with my nose. Then it's not you exercising your rights. It's you violating my rights. Now, there is a fine line there somewhere. You should, be you, know, you should be allowed to do an awful lot before somebody steps in. But when it comes to public health, even the framers of the Constitution knew that it was preferable to keep people indoors or to uh, you know, quarantine or to get vaccines or whatever to protect people. Even the framers knew that. George Washington vaccinated uh, his troops for smallpox. Like, before, I don't know if vaccines existed yet, but he, he inoculated them with smallpox. Let me put it that way. Um, prevented them from getting it. I think maybe he just infected them with a weaker strain or something. I don't know. Anyways, they understood the importance of vaccines. At the time, they understood the importance of public health and safety and everything and the role the government plays in it. Now, I can totally see the government overstepping their position at some point in time. But you live in a fantasy land where you're incapable of telling where that line is. You believe that the line is being overstepped now without a pandemic taking place. You believe that you are persecuted on a day to day basis. When you are actually in a position of authority, when you are in a position of power in the country. So we should rely on others, certainly not Greg Locke, to tell when the government is overstepping. They have not overstepped yet. Anyway, so that was his little announcement that he intends to shoot anybody that comes to his church, basically, if they're trying to stop him. Just, what is wrong with this guy? Honestly. Not. All right, let me, I think I stepped back. Let's keep listening here. Oh, by the by, I think the word you're looking for is magnanimous. The ability to hurt or destroy, but chose not to or choose not to. That's interesting. I know that word, but I, I never thought about it in that context. Um, yeah, I guess that is correct. Uh, that, that would be the right word for what I was thinking of. Magnanimous. Magnanimous. Interesting. How do you tie your shoes? Bunny ears or loop, swoop, and pull? This is a judge of character. It's loop, swoop, and pull for me, personally. Bunny ears. Look, when I was a child, I played with childish things. And when I became an adult, I put those childish things away. And the bunny ears had to go when I became an adult. The bunny ears went with God for me. Bunny ears is faster, okay? <laughs> Got starting a war in the chat. I apologize. <clears throat> anyway, let's keep listening here. People know that. You hear the go, go, go guy in the background is, I think, God, uh, what is his name? I have to know for sure. I think it's Patrick. He has like a Facebook page. He has a clothing line. Go guy clothing. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. I found a picture of him. Here he is right here. This is a go, go, go guy. Patrick, I think. Let me just double check, make sure that's his real name. Um, I don't. Maybe he's not public about his name. I'm not sure. I'm not seeing it anywhere on his Facebook page. But I guess he his whole thing. Instead of saying something that actually makes sense, like "I love Jesus" or "Yeah, Greg Locke" or something, he says "Go, go, go," and it's like, why, why, why do you say that? And apparently, the reason is because he says. Go, 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 tell the world about Jesus. 
That's his whole bit, apparently. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, I believe, Patrick. <laughs> okay, let's keep listening here. We're never going to compromise. We're never going to capitulate. We're never going to cave to the culture. Nobody asked you to, Greg. Nobody ever said you need to do any of that. But he's, he's got to be a victim, right? He's got to pretend that he's being victimized 24-7, of course. We're going we're gonna to love people that are in the culture, but we're never going to compromise so we can try to just bring the culture into the church. The purpose of a church is not to bring the culture in. The purpose of the church is to be a perfect bride when Jesus comes again, a spotless, beautiful, God-ordained, anointed, authoritative bride. God, that's just one of the weirdest things, I swear. Framing yourself up as a bride or the church as a bride or whatever is so f***ing weird to me. I'm sorry, man. I can't. I cannot do it. Why do people do that? Why do they view themselves as brides to Jesus? By the way, I don't know if you guys know Kat Kerr. She's kind of in this world. She claims to be a prophet. She said that everybody, every human being, will be basically divorced. Not divorced exactly, but they won't be married anymore when they die. Because, you know, until, until death do us part. So when you get to heaven... You marry Jesus because you're single and ready to mingle. And there's Jesus looking for you. I'm, I'm not joking. And she even said, you consummate the marriage with him. Really? Men and women. Everybody consummates the marriage with Jesus. I am not joking. I hope I have that clip. Do I have that? Please tell me I have it. People want to know if Jesus is a top or a bottom. That's a good question. I would say he's a power top. Dude, I don't think I have that clip. Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. Damn! I was really hoping I had that clip. Cur marriage. Or Cur Jesus? Uh, let me just look up Cat Cur clips. Cur. Oh, I was so hoping I had that. Cur Mary? No. I don't have it. Oh, that's sad. I don't know where that clip is. I, I, I should put a concerted effort into finding that because it was so funny. I don't, I don't remember exactly what, what I was watching with it, but I swear I remember hearing her say, everybody will marry Jesus in heaven and they will all consummate the marriage with him. Everybody, even dudes. And I just love it. I love everything about it, honestly. Anyway, let's keep listening. So I do not mean by humility in any way, shape, form, or fashion that we go on an apology tour and we, you know, say, oh, no, well, you know, we, we didn't really, you know, mean, but no, 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 no. I'm not saying that we lay down our morals and convictions. I told them last night uh, in Huntsville, and it just kind of came to me. I said, look, the problem with a lot of people is they are willing to lay down their convictions to be friends with people that will never be happy no matter what you lay down. I'm, I... I'm sorry, I don't understand. Did I just, like, zone out for a second? That didn't seem to make any sense to me. And, and some of you are trying to compromise your morals with immoral people, but once you become immoral like them, they are not going to be happy until you are more immoral than they are. But, okay, I, I guess Greg Locke would consider me to be immoral, right? He'd, he would consider me, like, one of those immoral people that's out to get him or whatever. One of those witches that's trying to convert him to witchianity or whatever the hell he thinks it's called. Um, I have no interest in people being quote-unquote immoral. I don't care. You know what I care about, honestly? This is what I care about the most. People living their life the way they want to live it. Without some jag-off that's J-A-G, YouTube. Do not give me a content strike. Jag, jag-off telling them what to do. Nobody should be told what to do. They should be able to live their life any way they want. This is the United States of America. What happened to all that freedom talk? Goes right out the window when people are not living the way that, that he wants them to live. That whole freedom thing that they talk about nonstop is only a grift. It's a scam intended to further their goals and interests. That's it. Always was. So we know Jesus used a whip when he needed to use a whip. 
We know Jesus cursed the fig tree when he needed to. We knew Jesus was more scathing with the church crowd than he was with the crack smoking crowd. Isn't that fascinating? He's he's zeroing in on the verses that portray Jesus as an angry, vicious, violent person. That is something else, isn't it? He zeroes in on the verses that back up his already held feelings about things. If Greg Locke is a vengeful, hateful person, he'll find the verses in the Bible to back it up. They're in there. You can find a verse to back up anything. And he zeroed in on the verses that really show how he feels. It's a fantastic way of getting a bead on how somebody really views the world, seeing what their interpretation of the Bible is. Apparently, Greg Locke's interpretation is vengeful and hateful, so that, I think that pretty much seals the deal for his personality. Like, we know what kind of personality he has. Although, I guess we knew long before now. We get that. But of all the statements Jesus said, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I can't be any of those. And none of them are a character reference. And there's Right. Again, this is a callback to what he said in the previous episode. Uh, Jesus has, I don't know, nine or something, I am statements. And they're all in the book of John. Because when the book of John was written, the writer was doing everything he could to convince the audience who was reading it that Jesus was the Messiah. So he referred to him as the Messiah. He, he changed the text to make it appear as though Jesus believed that he was the Messiah or the Son of Man. Um, as far as I know, Jesus did not actually view himself as the Son of Man. So John, the book of John, the writer, just completely made that up in an attempt to change the way that Christianity would kind of believe things and turn out later down the line. The book of John is also responsible for the Trinity, which is also something that Jesus did not believe in. He did not believe himself to be God. That's nonsensical. So, anyways, let's keep listening here. Uh, that's, what he's, that's what he's referring to is the point. Referring to those I am statements. Uh, in the book of John. I am the Messiah. I am the blah, blah, blah. They're not found anywhere else in the entire Bible except for the book of John, basically. There's only one that is a character reference and only one that I can example and emulate. I am, Jesus said, humble at heart. Right. Jesus said he's humble at heart in the book of Matthew. That's the only I am statement outside of the book of John, basically. That's, that's the point. Statements, Jesus said, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. I can't be any of those. And none of them are a character reference. And there's only one that is a character reference and only one that I can example and emulate. I am, Jesus said, humble at heart. So Greg Locke is shifting gears and decided that he wants to be humble and meek at heart, basically. That's what he's saying here. Now, let me tell you something. This is where things start shifting. Greg Locke is famously not humble or meek. He's famously an asshole. That, that is how he gained his platform in the first place. And this is what he called a, quote-unquote, shifting gears message. So it's going to be interesting to see what gear he shifts to here. I mean, he deleted a bunch of Facebook posts leading up to this talk. For a guy like me, sometimes... He's crying again. Why is he crying? What's he crying over? I, again, I'm the last one to perpetuate toxic masculinity, but what is he crying over? Humility. can feel like compromise because I'm a born fighter. I'll go down swinging. 
I'm not scared of any of them. Okay? So people clapping in the background a little bit. You hear that? Sometimes to me, when I, when I back off or I back out, it makes me feel like I'm backing down. Well, I mean, didn't he explicitly say that if you back off, then you're backing down and you're compromising? And he, the, this is a no compromise church and all that garbage. Didn't he say that? For example, I, I saw a video clip the other day of my wife and I explaining to the church that we myself and my wife. You wouldn't say I saw a video clip of I explaining blah, blah, blah. You would say I saw a video of myself explaining blah, blah, blah. So you wouldn't say I saw a video of my wife and I. You would say I saw a video of my wife and myself, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of the grammatical rule. I'm sorry. I'm a grammar Nazi. I admit it. For example, I, I saw a video clip the other day of my wife and I explaining to the church that we were going to move from the wedding chapel out into the parking lot during COVID. And I cried like a little girl in that video years ago. And I was like, man, anything other than sitting right here in this packed wedding chapel just feels like compromise to me. And so when, when I talk about humility, I'm not talking about compromise. Oh, no, I think it's a different situation if it was years ago. Compromising truth. I'll preach as bold as any of them. I'll run anybody off. When God says, say it, we'll mash the gas and say it. Right? Okay. But here's what I'm beginning to realize. God will take you through seasons. Again, why is he crying? What, what is he crying about right now? I don't understand. What is this about? To season you. That's why it's called a season. No, that's not why it's called a season. Some people come into your life for a season. Some people enter for a reason. Some people leave when the reason's done. Some people leave when the season's done. Okay. But as God has tempered me, here's what I've noticed. From about 17 to 20, I was getting my sea legs. Preaching in jails and rescue missions and mowing grass for $30 a weekend. Why is he crying? I don't understand. He's just talking about mowing grass as a kid. Are you kidding? I just, I don't understand. So I could preach live on the radio, just trying to figure out who I was. And then from 20 to 30, I was nuts. He's not, not crying now. Yeah, from my understanding, I believe that he has talked about doing meth when he was younger. Which, you know... I get it. You know, I was into drugs for a long time, too. Um, drugs are hard to kick, so I'm proud of him for doing that. That's it's not easy. You think I'm fast and crazy now? Golly. I had more rules than the book of Leviticus. I had more standards than God. I was as independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, no go to movies, women don't wear pants, don't wear makeup. Blah. I mean, I was no Redbox movies, no DVD. I was... Oh, God, Redbox. I forgot about Redbox. You guys remember that? The uh, little kiosk that would dispense DVDs for you to rent or whatever? Old school. I was a straight-laced. I hated myself. I wouldn't break the speed limit for fear that the sword of the Lord would... Cut me in half. Oh, check it out. It's a boomerang. I mean, I was whew, shaking. Bake had some standards. Let me know what I'm talking about. So from 20 to 30, I'm like, thank you, Holy Ghost. There was no YouTube. Man, I said some dumb stuff. There sure. Yeah, we've all said some dumb stuff. There's still some cassette tapes floating around, and thank God most of you threw your Walkmans away years ago, and you can't find them. Oh, I can, though. I actually have a video that he's probably referring to here. And then at 30... Okay, you know what? Since he's moving on to another subject, let's, let me just show you what he's probably referring to. He's talking about the Walkman. Thank God you guys threw your Walkman away. That's a cassette player, if you're unfamiliar. Um, he, w he fancied himself a, rap a rapper at one point, basically. Um, this is pretty loud, so let me see if I can turn it down. All right, give this a listen. This is a Greg Locke's little rap, if you will. 
one of them. Let me jump to, for copyright reasons, let me jump to where he starts singing. If I had a million dollars, let me tell you where it go. I would give it all to Jesus so that he may use it so. But since I am a pauper and I have no gold to spend, I'm going to give my life to Jesus Christ until my journey's in. If I had a million dollars, I'd give it all to Jesus. But since I'm a pauper, I think that means since I'm poor, I'm going to give my life to Jesus instead of my money. Okay, go on. I was once in bondage. My life was full of sin until that wonderful night when my Savior came in. He came within me. He did what? What was that? <laughs> oh, I love it, dude. I was once in bondage, my life was full of sin Until that wonderful night when my Savior came in He came within me and gave me a new start He took me from the miry clay and gave me a new heart I'm the leader of the pack, but my sheep call me pastor Walking in the steps of my Lord and my Master Life's too short, be playing with games I'm gonna get busy finding me some names of the people That need some real teaching Open up my Bible, do some full till preaching you know, he wrote the rap, and as far as rap goes, I guess I'm kind of impressed by... Damn it, I'm, I keep getting a boomerang. I don't want a boomerang. I thought boomerangs were in a different area. Maybe I need to go to a different pedestal to get the boomerang, or to get the Royal Brawl Charge. Anyways, as far as lyrics go, it's actually reasonably impressive that he seems to be, I, I mean... I didn't pick up any multi-syllable rhymes in there or anything, so there's that. But overall, it could be worse. It's not terrible, right? Uh, and the beat is not his. It's Eminem's. He came up with that, so he's just stealing it from Eminem. That tells me he listens to Eminem, or, or did at least. Jesus gave a clear command directed right at you But in your busy schedule you have failed to follow through The world is on its way to hell but do we even care Instead of speaking gospel we just always stop and stare If you notice he, he fancies himself a drummer also And it's the exact same beat Like he's not doing anything special or new or creative or amazing or any of that So I, I don't really know what the point is here but okay Care. Instead of speaking gospel, we just always stop and stare. It's time to get a burden for people and their fears. But you only cry at movies and for souls you shed no tears. So let's get You only cry at movies for souls you shed no tears. Let's make the right decision and walk about this place with a big global vision. <laughs> so anyways, that was Greg Locke's rap that he's probably referring to. There's another rap that he's done, actually. There's a bunch of uh greg Locke stuff here call himself rev rhymes if you're unfamiliar rev rhymes there are more people in the bondage of slavery today than at any other time in the history of the world maybe and if so then it'd be a function of how many people there are in the world now but okay 40 percent of all of our missing children in america are caught in sex trafficking rings. That is false. Um, a massive number of children that are found after being after you know being missing are runaways. They had a terrible life. They had a terrible family, and they 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 left. They wanted to get out. That's really what the you know eighty percent of the children that run away from home. That's what happened. But, you know, don't believe any of the quote-unquote facts that he lays out in this because they're all ridiculous. The average individual that is trafficked is sold for $90. 75% of them are sold by someone that they know very much. Again, it's all fake. You know, people said that this is a good song. I mean, well-constructed. I, I disagree completely. I think it's garbage. Even the beat isn't that good. Nothing about the song is good. Rev Rhymes. Rev Rhymes. There's an evil in these streets, but people, they keep walking. The government is hush-hush and preachers ain't talking. Everybody's quiet as a mouse. Because you don't get concerned unless it happens in your house. I see it on the news all the time. So no more can I keep silent, so I'm busting out this rhyme. It's time to lift the lid on a subject that ain't nice. They snatching up our kids, selling them out like they merchandise. Just, God, it's bad. I'm sorry. Okay, I, 
apologize for putting you guys through that. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I won't do it again. I promise. I already did it once on my main channel. Now I'm doing it on Unfiltered. I won't do it again. For a while, at least. Everybody's quiet as a mouse. Because you don't get concerned unless it happens in your house. I see it on the news all the time. So no more can I keep silent, so I'm busting out this rhyme. It's time to lift the lid on a subject that ain't nice. They snatching up our kids, selling them out like they merchandise. We've overlooked it like a big misplacement. Not thinking about the girls beat up naked in a basement. There's no hope for victims, only danger. Forced all the time, having sex with a stranger. I know that sounds so dirty, you'd rather turn your face. But you can't sit there silent and still preach about his grace. It's gonna take an army to stand against this wrong. It's become an epidemic that's now 30 million strong. Dude, I am so proud of this cat. She, she lost so much leg strength. You guys probably can't see her, but she lost a lot of leg strength in the past a uh, couple of weeks and she she's basically trying to gain that leg strength back and she has not been able to jump up in a couple of spots she hasn't been able to jump on the bed very much lately and she hasn't been able to jump in my lap on over my my chair and she just she just did it i had to help her i had to put my hand on her and pull her the rest of the way up but she was hanging on for dear life. Oh, I'm so proud of her. She's doing so much better. That's fantastic. I'm so glad she made it up. Such a good kitty. Anyway, I'm sorry for that interruption. She she went to the vet and got very, very, very sick. And we were convinced she wasn't going to make it through. Uh, we even mourned her death. And um, it, it turns out she made it. So that's fantastic, right? I'm really, really happy about that. All right, let's keep listening to Rev Rhymes. My friend, this ain't no game. Don't act like you can pause it. Imagine it's your kid in some dirty dude's closet. I'm not apologizing for being too graphic. It well, the thing is, these are all QAnon claims. Like, none of this stuff is real. Yes, there are a couple of... There are instances where human trafficking takes place. Um, you know, children are traded and stuff like that in the way he's describing. But he believes, as QAnon believes, that... You know, children are like the largest commodity in the United States, even bigger than the drug trade. And it's just absurd, dude. Come on. There, It's not like hinged to reality at all. It's not. They're, they don't have when I say they I'm talking QAnon and Greg Locke. They don't have the in, the evidence that they need to make any of the claims that they're making here it's simply absurd from top to bottom time to break the silence for the victims of the traffic time to break silence for the victims of the traffic okay This ain't some little problem that you're sitting on a shelf. Fifty billion dollars a year speaks for itself. Yeah, I don't know if any of this is true. I, I seriously, deeply doubt all of the stuff that he's saying here. It's time to scrub a dub, clean our cities like water, and tell these stinking pimps, keep your hands off our daughters. Dude, he is really, really bad at rhyming. These rhymes are piss poor, in my opinion. Um, for the record, uh, um, people have positive view of pimps a lot of the time. They shouldn't. Pimps are actually terrible, in all seriousness. They're human traffickers. People seem to think like they protect their girls or whatever. No, they're they're scumbags that take advantage of people. They're awful in every way and should not have any level of respect. Modern day slavery, yeah, I'm being for real. I ain't talking about no cotton picking out in the field. People tied up, beat down in submission. Chained to the bed, can't get up without permission. We choose to close our eyes and turn around the other way. But if we don't do something, then this mess is here to stay. You know what's interesting? He's talking about this stuff. Um, you know, chained up and not allowed to get up without permission and all that stuff. That actually is real. That really does happen. A lot with a group, with, well, with a bunch of religious groups, but with one called Word of Faith Fellowship. Yes. Word of Faith Fellowship. Write it down. Okay. 
This actually does happen a lot with a group called Word of Faith Fellowship, which is connected to Robert Tilton, um, a televangelist, an extremely famous televangelist. I don't think he's operating anymore because he was exposed as a con artist. But anyway, um, yeah, they were connected to Robert Tilton, and they operate in North Carolina, and they are now what, you know, they're a group called Women for Trump, and God, they're insane. Anyways, they're very similar theologically to Greg Locke. They believe a lot of the same things as Greg. And they did this stuff. Famously, this group is known for tying children to chairs in the nursery and beating the shit out of them if they did something that they didn't like, if they complained or if they didn't repeat exactly as they instructed them to or whatever they had a demon and it needed to be exercised with with their fist that was the whole belief system um god i i keep wanting to get into this because i'm reading the book right now but i don't want to i don't want to get into it yet i want to finish reading it before giving you any more information so i'm just going to leave it there but yeah it's very similar to greg Locke's belief system that's that's real okay greg Locke's talking about you know, all this human trafficking that's happening that's really not as common as he believes it to be. This is really happening by religious extremists. Does he say a word about that? Of course he doesn't. Turn around the other way But if we don't do something Then this mess is here to stay It's way past time To start lifting up our voices We gotta get equipped Mobilize, join forces Don't look at me so shocked Like ignorance is bliss I guarantee you'll change When they tricking out your kids It's become a big business Second only to drugs The people making money Ain't a bunch of stupid thugs Wow, the people making money Aren't a bunch of stupid thugs thugs usually thug is a word used to refer to black person in a more subtle way like like referring to urban areas if they're urban then they're talking about black people and it so basically what he's saying here I, what i'm reading is it's second only to drugs which are run by black people but it's not black people not only black people apparently that are running the human trafficking ring again he has no way to know any of this. He probably saw these stats on some extremist right-wing forum and didn't actually look this information up for himself. Um, I did look this information up, and it's really, really difficult to figure out exactly where all of this stuff you know, is happening and who's doing it and all that. Like, How many people are the victims of it? It's hard to know for sure. The people making money ain't a... Uh, he claims, as QAnon does, that there are 400,000 kids per year being taken into human trafficking rings. That's false. What is the actual number? Well, I know 80% of those reported missing children are kids that ran away from home in their late teens. Uh, there's another percentage of those kids that were recovered because, you know, they wandered off at the mall and were discovered by the police when they arrived or whatever. They just wandered off and, and were returned to the parent shortly thereafter. Uh, it is a fraction of a fraction of what he claims. 400,000 kids, 80% are runaways, maybe 5% are recovered, maybe 15% of what he's saying are not accounted for. And that doesn't mean that they were sold into slavery. That means they're not accounted for. Very different, but okay. Just stupid thugs, they're all walks of life. Everybody you meet, chances are there's a perpetrator living on your street. The face of this crime is a growing demographic. It's time to break the silence for the victims of the traffic. It's time to break the silence for the victims of the traffic. Oh, I, dude, I love the, uh, the, the fire effect that he has going on. It's fantastic. All right, all right. Let's keep listening here. I started the church 17 years ago. I appreciate the fact that he snorted into the microphone. That was really nice of him to do that, right? That was really cool that he likes to make weird noises into the microphone like that. Thank you. From 30 to... 
40. Let's take it in tens. Things were interesting. I was figuring out who I was. Again, he was, uh, I believe he was a meth addict at one point in time. Because it was more difficult to figure out who I wasn't. So uh, I don't, I don't think I fully understand what he's talking about here. What do you mean by that? We broke out of a lot of stuff. He's crying again. God challenged us in a lot of ways. We went through a lot of brokenness and blah, blah, blah. And then from 40 to about 45, I don't know if that's midlife. But for those five years, we built something. Thank God for it. Right. So I think he's talking about how he built Global Vision Church. Because he's almost, I, I, isn't he 50? I think he's 50 now. Hey, let me just check my cat's glucose. Miki. Miki. Okay, we're good. I, I was worried that Miki was going to have high glucose, but she looks good. I mean, it's a little bit low, actually, on the low side, but could be worse. So there's that. I don't, min I don't demonize our past. I just question some of the methodology we use to get there. He's crying again. So he says he doesn't demonize her past. He just questions a methodology he used to get there, i.e., in the past five years. Okay, so in the past three years, he's been diving into deliverance ministry. The, the five years before that were spent talking shit about gay people and hating, you know, this group of people and that group and blah, 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 whatever. It was all about hate, ultimately, and it was all about saying really obnoxious stuff. So I guess he's saying that he feels bad now for doing that? I, I, am I reading this correctly? Is that all right? Preach like that. <laughs> sure, let's step back, have some context here. We built something. Thank God for it. I don't, min I don't demonize our past. I just question some of the methodology we use to get there. Is that all right? Preach like that. <laughs> so, you know, we went through a lot. Our family went through a lot. The church went through a lot. We never thought we was going to grow. We never knew revival was coming. We had no idea it was going to be movies and books and we, none of that stuff. We, we knew it in theory because God had promised that revival was coming long before it showed up. We just didn't know how in the world it was going to progress and actually turn into that. So we grew. We grew and the Lord blessed and last few years were were truly unbelievable remarkable and that's why people still come from all over the world and i don't well it's because he's creating a cult that's actually why people come from all over the world not because you know he has the right belief system or whatever he's creating a, an insular little cult minimize that and they will continue to come from all over the world but here's where i got to just talk to you as, as a shepherd for a few minutes okay Again, remember, this is a shifting gears message. He's changing the way that he fundamentally views his belief system. That's what is happening right now. Because of my name, I'm, I'm, I'm weighing my words. And he's crying. Why is he crying? Again. Like, I don't even care that he's crying. Just tell me why. I just want to know why. What is the reason you're doing this? Hang on. Almost got away from me there. Because of my nature, because of the way my daddy is, and just, just the lockness about me. Just the lockness about me, okay. We were able to... Yes, for the most part, stay out of God's way in a lot of ways. A and we were able to grow something great because of the demonstrable power of God. I don't minimize. Okay, the one time he could actually use the word demonstrable correctly and he chooses to say demonstrable. Really? Demonstrable isn't a word. This entire time he's been using demonstrable wrong and the one opportunity he has to use it correctly, he doesn't. It's just God, this dude. That. There's no way we can be where we are if God had forsaken us. You don't get this 
under the, under the curse of the Lord. I don't care what the haters say. But let's just be honest, okay? You don't get this unless it's under the work of the Lord. Is that what he just said? I don't care what the haters say. Well, what do you say about Jim Baker? Jim Baker had a gigantic ministry. Hell, what do you say about uh, Pat Robertson and Kenneth Copeland? I'll tell you what he says about him. He hates them. He thinks they're evil, bad, wrong. That's what he says about Kenneth Copeland and Jim Baker and all of the others. So he can't possibly use this as a, uh, you know, as proof that he's somebody special, that he's God's chosen guy. You know, the Mormon church does this exact thing. It's split into like 50 different factions, the Mormon church is, right? And the biggest denomination of Mormons say, well, th this is proof right here that we're God's chosen people because we're the biggest. And the smaller ones say, you know, this is a remnant church, as the Bible says, this is proof that we're God's chosen people. They're all using the Bible to prove that they're God's people. So this is a piss poor explanation, Greg, I'm sorry. A man's personality. Again, why is he crying? I just want a reason. I don't have a problem with it. I just want to know why. That's all. Can build things big just by virtue of who he is. Um, I don't know that I agree. I'm not really sure what he's talking about here, but okay. I'm, I'm hanging on. Let him cook. And how he says and frames up certain things. So I think, and let's be honest, I know that there have been momentary lapses in judgment of when meekness should have been the tool of ministry. So he's saying that there were lapses in judgment. He should have been meek and shut his mouth and been calm rather than yelling at people the way that he did. Oh, boy, you can bet your bottom dollar that we're going to look at some examples of him yelling at people, too. But meanness got more amens. Now, look, I know we have a lot of people that move to our church because of my political stands, and I don't minimize that. I honor you. For, I honor you for being a conservative and, you know, wanting God to turn this garbage around in this nation. I get it. But why does he keep snorting into the microphone? Please don't do that, Greg. Um, but he's saying that he's moving away from politics, apparently. Interestingly enough, uh, this is something that you would have to go back pretty far to catch. But um, and he held a conference at the reawaken america tour recently like they hosted their conference at his church and he basically said when we finish this it's over we're done with this and i didn't know what that meant at the time what does he mean when this is over we're done but i'm starting to think what he meant was he's moving away from politics and he's moving toward quote unquote deliverance ministry for being a conservative and, you know, wanting God to turn this garbage around in this nation. I get it. But you do have to realize that those days are done. Oh, boy, that's fascinating. So is Greg saying that he's leaving politics behind entirely? I need to write this timestamp down. This is actually a really big deal, if true. I just... Deli There's the go, go, go guy, and everybody is clapping. Deliverance changed the focus of who I am and all of that. Do I want America saved? Yeah, but I want Americans saved, because Americans are the key to America. See, this is fascinating. Now, he actually has the view that the founding fathers, the well, the ones that were religious, that were not John Adams, had about everything. He's... he's emulating or he's mirroring the viewpoint that most non-extreme denominations have and the view that they have is 
I shouldn't be getting involved in government because it's irrelevant to my life and to everything. It, it doesn't matter. What matters is saving people. That's it. I should stop focusing on politics. I should not care anymore. That's the idea. Now, I honestly am blown away by the fact that he seems to have reached this conclusion. That's honestly, like, really, really surprising to me. And we'll see if it sticks. I'm not convinced it will. But okay, let's keep listening. But I want Africa saved. I want Europe saved. I want Asia saved. I want the world. This is a global vision church, not, not, a, not a local vision church. Right? Global vision, not local vision. He absolutely sits around and comes up with these stupid sayings, doesn't he? So I know it doesn't minimize anything that, that, that I did or said. I thank God for the, for the, for the Trump tour, right? I, I thank God for all... Talking about the Reawaken America tour, that nutcase extremist QAnon... Um, what do you call it? Like, uh, QAnon... Um, I guess, a conference that, that's held, that he held at his church, I think a couple times. All the trips to the White House, uh, and, and who knows what the Lord will do. It'll just be a different context if he does it. Because that crowd needs deliverance. <laughs> Rolling Stones called a couple weeks ago, and they kept messing with Wayne. He kept messing with me. They just kept, I just kept ignoring them. I'm like, who wants to talk to them people? Right? <laughs> And I, Please stop making noises into the microphone, Greg. I'm begging you. I told Wayne, I said, look, if this is a political deal, tell him no. I don't care about no Rolling Stone magazine. I used to think, man, we got to take every CNN interview, you know, because I'll put... Well, it's valuable to anybody to take lots of interviews, right, to um, expand your public presence. Publicity is good publicity. That is bullcrap. All publicity is good publicity, or no publicity is bad publicity is actually the saying, I think. And no, it's not. That's actually very true. Just look at Donald Trump, for example, uh, and his kind of tactic for how he gets people to focus on him 24-7. He does something absolutely psychotic, and people's, and his name is on people's lips as a result. That's the goal. Look at, uh, what was it, Lady Gaga that had that weird-ass meat dress and that Saturday Night Live comedian Jim Brewer. <laughs> this dude talked about me on his podcast for like an hour and a half or something because I covered him forever ago, like a year ago. Anyway, he talked about Lady Gaga and how her meat dress is secretly part of a satanic... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, that is, she, you know, he's using it as evidence that it's proof that she's part of this cabal or whatever. Anyways, that's why she did it, was to get people's attention. That was the whole goal, and she succeeded in getting your attention. She succeeded in getting her name on your lips. That was, that was the point. No press is bad press, is the idea. If you make a splash, yeah, you may piss some people off, but it will draw attention. It'll, it'll turn you into a household name. People will know you. Your name will be on their lips. Now, I don't operate that way. I, I mean, that's kind of a reactionary, extreme way of operating, and that's just not who I am or how I do things at all. So, you know, I, I'm not trying to... Like, I would love it if my name was on, on every person's lips, but I'm not going to do it by saying some radical, extreme shit to try to catch attention. That's just not who I am or how I operate. So anyways, uh, that's only true for certain people, basically, is the point. Let's keep listening. here. That was some poor wisdom that somebody told me. A friend of mine who's still my friend. I could call him right now. All publicity is good publicity. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yes, it is, actually, uh, by and large. Um, you're getting your name on their lips, and that's what matters. I'm going to scan the cat again. She's sitting right on me. 110. Okay, she's maintaining at 110. That's good. That's good news. Usually her blood sugar drops pretty hard around 230, so we'll see if, if you know we have that to worry about. 